it's okay with everyone. Okay, so from this group, who is going to... Ah, you have been chosen. Okay, everyone, so please uh, uh, help us. Uh, uh, we, we need to, to listen. Thank you. Uh, what helps me to preserve my service when I feel exhausted or discouraged? Lo the answers were love of God, love of friends, preparation. When there's a need, a fruit of it, the people need empathy and and we have people from various ministries, and each one has its own, like, personality with it. What can get in the way? The second question, the big answer, me. <laughs> Lack of humility, focusing on the business of the task, uh, and God isn't involved. Um, so that's kind of the basic. Thank you. Thank you so much to the group, you know, for uh, being able to uh, share all these, these beautiful uh, thoughts. And, and it, it helps us to enrich one another. So uh, from this group, who, okay. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. So um, in our group, we talked a lot about um, uh, reflecting on the calling um, into ministry and that um, we're not being called to be perfect, um, you know, as uh, Bishop was saying, you know, but rather a willingness to do our ministry. And, and I know that um, personally, um, I was just sharing that I get caught up in that a lot with the music ministry because it's easy to try to make the music as perfect as possible. You know, we talk practice makes perfect, right? So, um, so I have to let go of that a lot when I feel like it's far less than perfect, you know? And um, because people will come up to us on the days that I feel like our ministry is just not, um, you know, hitting the mark at all, you know? And some people will come up to us and say, oh my God, that was so beautiful. And so, you know, I have to keep being reminded that um, God sends. Hello, God sends. Uh, <laughs> that spirit. God sends His spirit to to make it perfect in the ways in which you know we're not perfect, and so we have to rely on that. So, anyway, and then um, some of the other uh, challenges that others shared in our group were um, just that um, realization that you know ministry takes time. And um, it's not easy um, sometimes to make that kind of a commitment. You know, it's like it's going to take me, you know, in the ministry I'm doing an extra two hours, you know, on a Sunday. But then just trying to remind ourselves that, um, you know, Sunday is the day for the Lord and to be able to, to you know, put everything else in our lives aside um, in order to do that ministry. And so... Um, Others shared that it was um, what, what gave them uh, perseverance in the ministry is um, their spouse or other people in the ministry. So that support of another person, because, you know, it's like working out, right? Like, I'm not going to work out unless somebody holds me accountable to work out with them, you know, or something. So, um, and then... Um, Sometimes the discouragement comes when you feel like all the efforts you're putting into ministry are not uh, producing fruit, you know, that there's um, difficulties that people are having and you're, through your ministry you want to see them flourish and, and you want to see those fruits come. And we talked a lot about how, you know, we're there hopefully planting seeds so that that fruit will eventually, you know, um, produce, but it's not something that we always see, you know, or it's not going to be in our time frame, but it's God's time frame, so. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much also then for um, sharing with all of us uh, your conversation, this group. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I agree with 
what I heard with some of the others, but uh, they, uh, we had said that uh, you all encourage us. When we come, when we see you all. You are our encouragement, and you help us to persevere. Also, the idea and the not the, the experience of, of of receiving the Holy Eucharist and knowing that that's the reason why we all come together here and to be part of the team that's helping the whole body receive. And obstacles, I'm old. <laughs> but I want to. And you're not old, but you want to. And so those are some obstacles. The clock, time, tired. I might even hear a voice that says, you don't really need to do this today. And we all know where that voice comes from. So in general, I think that that's what we talked about together in our group. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and it doesn't matter the age. You still have all your gifts and talents. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So um, to start with, it's uh, difficult when some of our people are really ill and we, when we're taking the Eucharist to the, to the homes. And uh, even, though, even though some of them are really ill, they're just so pleased to see us there. And, and um, the time and scheduling it's kind of a, of a problem that, that we have to face with, and we just work around that. Uh, the giving is rewards and the gifts, all the, the beautiful people that we do see, some of them they are so happy and so pleased to receive the Eucharist. Uh, one situation just happened last week. One of them asked us to take them to Mass, and we, so we did that the next the following uh, Sunday, and, and it was just joyful. So that's it. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much also then for sharing uh, your experiences. Uh, next group. I think, uh, let's see. Okay, in, in the helps department, <laughs> we talked about um, the need to fulfill our responsibility that we agreed to um, and the appreciation we received from those whom we serve, just as you said. Um, it's our community that um, feeds us, basically, to keep going um, and, and enjoying our ministry. And we've got to enjoy it. We have to have um, fun, find fun where we can and establish relationships. So to what you were saying, yes, um, we can't just pass without really knowing who that person is, so getting to know people. Um, and then when we feel overwhelmed by pressures and demands of others, stepping back and reflecting and trying to do the best to accomplish um, what we're tasked with. Prayer and quiet with the Lord, listening for him and that small, still voice, and quiet time with God. The obstacles, you know, just frustrations at how things are going, and I think we put those demands on ourselves, but we feel, like you said, we want it to be perfect, and it's never going to be perfect, but, you know, humans try to keep striving for that. Um, and then, the, the, again, the things we put on ourselves, conflicts and inner struggles, um, but if we go back and um, remember that we're here to serve from the heart and to do the best we can 
and just leave the rest to God. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. So next group, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so um, things to do when we're exhausted or feel a little bit closer to. Okay. <laughs> Um, when, when we feel exhausted or discouraged, we, we need to remember to look at the face of those that we serve and, um, and know that we're doing it for God and to get out of our own head. Um, and um, our greatest obstacle is usually ourself, our self-doubt. You know, like Bishop said in the beginning that, you know, why am I called to do this? You know, who am I? And when we get out of ourselves, it's better. And my dear friend, her, her quote, she quoted, said this, remember, it's not about me. And, and I thought that would just kind of summed up both these questions. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, then, for sharing also your thoughts and conversation. Next group. Hi. Hi. Oh, it works. <laughs> I'm Randy. I, I was told that I was elected, although I don't remember the voting process. <laughs> and, and, anyway, I also noticed the last groups, the people came from the middle seats. So I guess there's a, a message there. Don't sit in the middle seat. <laughs> anyway, for our group, uh, in regards to uh, what we use to help persevere and to move forward, uh, a lot of it has to do, it seemed like it was uniformly uh, uh, together about being inspired by other people with challenges and how they overcome their challenges. And, and then through prayer, of course, involved prayer, they say, well, if that person can do it, then overcome those challenges, I can get up and do my small part. And that's very inspirational to all of us. And there were some pretty amazing uh, things that came out of our group about different ways of helping the community and getting involved. Uh, in regards to obstacles, the biggest thing I think that we all agreed on was that the fear of getting up and taking that leap of faith, stepping forward and getting involved. And once again, uh, prayer is involved for doing that and uh, taking that leap of faith and getting involved is just the biggest thing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate also sharing your sharing. Well, we didn't have a voting process. I, because I'm a teacher, got nominated. <laughs> um, our group, when we did, we discussed, um, this, the consensus was that if not us, who? Nobody else has been stepping up. The younger people still aren't stepping up. So if not us, if not us, then who else is going to minister to all those in need? And that's what made most of us persevere. That and the fact that the thank yous and the appreciation that comes from serving and the love we get in return for the love that we give to everybody else. The obstacles, again, were pretty much what everybody else said was the um, time and um, confidence in making that commitment. That's pretty much what our group did. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing also your conversation. Next group. Hi, Deacon Victor reminded me to introduce myself and tell you my ministry. I'm Pat. I'm in choir and creation care, and I bring communion to the homebound. To help us persevere, um, we should stop and think about why we joined this ministry in the first place. Pray about it. Does God want me to continue with this? Uh, think about the call that got you started and keeps you going. God sends you little encouragements. Look for the little blessings along the way. One of our members prays at least three times a day looks for the face of God, takes time to examine her day and how she's recognized the face of God and responded to him. 
When we get discouraged, we can call each other and encourage each other. There's always a message from God if we pay attention, if we get quiet and listen for the message. And we need to be humble. It's not about me, it's about the Lord. Some of the obstacles, one of our members is adjusting to being retired and how that affects her ministry, how her health issues affect her ministry, her ability to participate. Another one of us is always worrying about whether or not she's doing enough. Uh, is she doing it from her heart? Is she trying to please people and wanting to not disappoint people? And how that can leads to feel, lead to feelings of guilt. Um, someone else said, why aren't other people as excited about my ministry as I am? What can I do about that? Um, it's important to me. Why isn't it important to them? That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Do we have uh, here? Yes. Thank you, Bishop. Um, I'll go over here. Um, my name is Maria. Good morning. Our awesome group came up with these answers. Okay, for the um, what helps us to persevere when we feel exhausted or discouraged? Rest. Prayer. Going away to a deserted place like Jesus did, whether it's physically or mentally. Um, reflection, why am I exhausted? Why am I discouraged? Then we remember what Jesus did. We accepted whatever, we, we accept, we did what Jesus did. We, he accepted everyone. We look for the good. We pray for others. We go, we go within and we pray for the intercession of Mary. What are the obstacles? Ego, pride, lack of humility, exhaustion, obligations, work. There will always be obstacles, but it's, it's how you respond to them. Trust in God. Let God do his thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are we missing any other group? That's it. Okay, well, thanks everyone for uh, sharing um, your conversation in your groups. Uh, this enriched um, very, very much. Let me see, I switch to the other mic. So this enriched in, in a, an amazing way um, what we have been sharing and reflecting. And as you can see, all of us, including myself, we find many obstacles in ministry. There are many things in our lives, in our journey, that becomes obstacles. But how beautiful that we can also see the, the good things that um, we have to do and we continue to do to help us uh, be strengthened in that ministry. So from some of the things that, that you said, um, please continue to build relationships among yourselves. It's important to have uh, friends in, in, in your ministry or in other ministries. Um, find time, yes, to rest. It's very, very important. You know, if we don't rest, you know, there is a moment when our body and then our body, you know, then our spirit, you know, and then everything, you know, gets, gets so discouraged, so tired, you know, we need to, um, to do that. Um, if you decide, because sometimes it happens, you know, that people decide, I need to take a break from ministry. Um, I want to ask you then have a plan because one of the things that happen very often if you stop doing your active ministry it is the danger is that yes you're going then to stop even if you say you know it's just going to be you know for a few weeks or for a few months you know because I'm, it's always the danger that then you're not going to come back you know to, to that so it's always important that you have a plan. What it means, you know, if I'm going to live active ministry, how it means I'm still going to continue to be active in my faith, active, you know, in my spiritual life. Um, pray for one another. 
and let the other person know, you know, that you're praying for for him, for her, and and uh, and not just let, let that person know, you know, pray, pray for for that person. It, it's it's amazing how prayers help all of us, and I know. Um, I wanted to be a priest since I was seven years old. But growing up, you know, then, and being involved in the church, you know, actively in the church, you know, after I was 11, you know, as a lecturer and catechist and all those kind of things, um, people who knew that I wanted to be a priest, you know, said, well, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for you. And knowing that, you know, sometimes it's not, well, I don't know if they're really praying for me. You know, but one of the persons who always said, I'll be praying for you, was my grandmother, you know. And as a kid, you know, when I stay at my grandparents' house, and my grandmother would get up every day at 5 o'clock in the morning to spend one hour, you know, praying the rosary and prayer and then reading sacred scripture and praying for everyone in the family, I knew that she was praying for me. And when someone tells me, I'm going to be praying for you, I believe that. I really believe that, that they are going to be praying for me. And prayers, you know, sustain us, help us. If it's not for the prayers, you know, of all of you, if it's not the prayers for all those people who know me, I wouldn't be here today. I can assure you that I wouldn't be here today. But thanks be to God for them. Um, and something else that uh, is, is important also uh, I think, and, and, and it's part of our, our work and mission. Um, remember, and, and as some of you say, you know, God does not need us. God does not need any one of us. God wants us. He wants me to be there. He doesn't need me, but he wants me to be his servant. He wants me to uh, uh, do the, his mission. He wants me to help him in the work of salvation. He wants me. He doesn't need me, but he wants me. So in that sense, continue also to be open to see who are other people in the community who may have talents for that ministry, for that work, because we're not going to be here all the, forever. You know, we're not going to last forever. That's, that's uh, something that is true. And, and, and we need to continue to invite others. And the best way to invite others is personal invitation. Personal invitation. Do not be afraid. I mean, if you are afraid that the other person is going to tell you, no, I cannot do that. That's okay. That's okay. Do not be afraid to receive a no. Just open the door and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. But I know... As, as a priest, and I see it all the time, yes, you are very busy. You sometimes, you know, have three or more ministries that you're doing. Besides then the work that you have, you know, the, your family and all the other activities that you have. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's really amazing what you are able to do. It is, I, I cannot believe, you know, with everything that, that you also have to do. Um, and, and many times, you know, then people will say, you know, Father, it's, it's just feel that we're always the same. We're the same doing the same work. I mean, we're the same. So, and I understand. Believe me, you are the pillars of the church. You are the ones who keep the church standing. And your work and your ministry is very, very important. It's essential. But continue to find ways then to invite others to be part of that ministry, to be part of that work. Again, do not be afraid to ask. That's all you have to do. Just plant the seed, and that's it. Um, and, and if you feel that God is calling you to do a different ministry, do not be afraid also for that. We always need to learn from what the apostles did. I mean, they will go to communities. They will start the church. Then they will leave, leave uh, leaders you know, in the community, and they will move on, move on to the next town. That's the same thing that we also have to do. I mean, if I feel that... Maybe God is calling me to begin a new ministry or God is calling me to a different ministry because I have been doing this ministry for so many years and I think 
well, there is other people who can do this ministry, then, yeah, let the Spirit, you know, lead you with that. You, you don't have to, to remain with the same ministry uh, all, all your life, uh, but just stay with the ministry. Yeah, stay with the ministry. But, but again, you don't have to, to, to stay in the, in the same way. Um, they say, you know, that uh, a life in ministry is, is like a boxing match. You know, you, 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 you have, it doesn't matter, you know, how many blows you receive, you know, you still have to, to get up again, you know. So, so it, it, it is just like that. Um, so there are many challenges, difficulties. God has always a beautiful way to bring us back. And I say that, you know, as a personal testimony. Many, many different times that I kind of thought, did I make the wrong decision? Maybe did I really want it to be a priest or it was just uh, something that I thought as, 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 a, as a kid? Um, God will always find ways to bring me back. Many, many different ways. Oops. And someone gave me, you know, the, uh, uh, the clip, you know, but then I forget, you know, to, to use the clip. Um, one, one experience that I would like to share with you is precisely one time when I was really very, 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 very sad. It was um, a few years after my ordination, but I was very, very sad because I, I, I thought, you know, that, uh, I mean, ministry is hard. It's not easy. And again, you know, it, we want to please people, but it takes a long time for us to realize we are not here to please people. We are here, you know, to please God. You know, but, but many times you want to do that. You want to please others. So, so it was a, a great challenge. I was very depressed, very, very sad and depressed. I was thinking that maybe, yeah, I made a mistake becoming a priest. So one day uh, in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, a bird comes and stands in the tree that is just next to my window and begins to sing. And I said, why in the world this bird chose this tree to come and sing at this time of the day. I need to sleep. I, I, I want to stay in bed. You know, why in the world? You know, just like, go away. So, next morning, the same thing. Five o'clock in the morning, that bird was, all, was there again singing. And it's one of those, you know, birds that have different melodies, right? You know, that, that have all these different melodies, which is beautiful. But again, I was so sad, so depressed, angry. I was just, so the next morning, I just said, darn it. One again. I mean, there are so many other trees here in the garden. Why, you know, this very tree, you know, next to my window. So the third day, the same thing, 5 o'clock in the morning. And that day I said, why? Three times already? I mean, wh why is this happening? And then I said, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? So, fourth morning, the bird came. And I said, thank you, Lord, for, for waking me up with this beautiful music. The next morning, the bird didn't show up. <laughs> but I knew, I knew that God wanted me to experience that. And to be able to move from that sadness and that depression into the joy of being able to say, Lord, thank you for waking me up with music. Thank you. And, and I knew then when the bird, you know, didn't show up the next day, like, yeah, it had to be from heaven, you know, four days on a row. And, and then once I recognized that, yeah, maybe it was a gift from God. Well, it was a gift from God. Um, We do everything not to be recognized. We do everything, again, to please God. And, and uh, we don't have to be necessarily anonymous. Some of you said it, it is important to thank other people and do that. Humility doesn't mean that then um, when someone comes and says, you know, oh, you are such a wonderful cantor. You are such a wonderful uh, um, uh, hospitality person. Or you are such a wonderful catechist. Or you are such a teacher whatever, don't say, oh, well, no, not really. I'm not really the best. Or, I mean, humility means that you acknowledge that God has given you that gift, and you just say, thanks be to God for this gift that God allows me to share with everyone. So thank 
other people. Again, it's not to make the other person to feel, you know, like, yeah, I'm, you know, uh, Batman's, you know, grandma, um, or Superman, uh, grandma. It is just to acknowledge that, yes, yeah, the other person is doing a ministry, is doing a work, and it's important, you know, then to recognize that for one another. Um, so one time a millionaire, you know, was on the street, and, and then he decides, you know, to give a donation, you know, to this orphanage, and, and the sisters are there, you know, uh, um, you know, asking for donations. So he decides to give a check, you know, and he writes, you know, the check for $1 million and gives it to the, you know, places there on the basket. So the next day, you know, then the sister, you know, uh, finds him, goes back all the way to his, to his office and says, sir, you know, thank you so much for your check and, and for your generosity, the, the, the one million dollars, but you forgot to sign it. <laughs> and then the person responded, sister, don't worry. I want to remain anonymous. <laughs> so... We don't want to remain anonymous. Again, we want to make sure that others know that what we are doing is God's work, and we are doing it from the heart, and we are doing it because we were chosen, we are called, and when they see that joy in what we do, other people may want them to say, I want to do that. I want to, to do that ministry. I want to do that work. You know, I, ha I want to have that, that joy. So, as I was mentioning it's important then that we know how loved we are. If we forget how loved we are, then we're not going to be able to do our ministry. We need always to know that I am loved, and this is the reason I am here. So if, if, if this uh, a reflection from St. Teresa of Calcutta helps you, as it help, helps me, you know, keep it. Keep it and read it whenever you feel that you need to be renewing that love. I have a copy, you know, next to to uh, my, my desk uh, uh, top, you know, and every time, you know, I kind of forgetting how low I am, I read, I read again that, that message. Um, but it is important also because without knowing, if we don't let the love of God to freely flow in our lives, we might develop spiritual cholesterol. And believe me, it does exist. As the other cholesterol exists in our bodies, you know, and happens without knowing it, right? So um, I didn't know that I had cholesterol until my doctor, you know, told me, hey, you have uh, bad cholesterol, you know, we need to treat it. Like, well, how come, you know, where did I came from? You know, of course, I knew that I was not really taking good care, you know, of my health. Uh, but yeah, it had to show up sooner or later. It happens the same thing in our ministry life. If I don't let the love of God to truly flow in me and to flow in everything that I am doing, little by little I might then develop spiritual cholesterol. And that spiritual cholesterol is not going to allow me then to do everything that I wanted to do for the glory of God. And I may end up then doing it for something else, for another reason, or even just for my own benefit, but not for, for God. So uh, God is always going to, to show us how much he loves us, as, as I mentioned, you know, with that story about the bird coming. Um, in the letter, uh, the first letter of St. John, uh, chapter 3, 1, you all, all of you know this phrase, you know, see the love that the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God, yet so we are. Yet so we are. So we are not only called children of God, we are children of God. So see how love we are. And again, in the, the first letter of St. John, chapter 4, 16, God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. God is never going to force us to love him. God is always going to give us his, his love, but God is never going to force us to love him back. It has to be our own decision. So one time, you know, a little girl, you know, comes running to her mom and, Mommy, Mommy, a boy kissed me. <gasps> how, how, how did that happen? Oh, Mommy, it was not easy. But other three girls helped me, you know, to get him, uh, uh, you know, so, to, to, to grab him. So, I mean, we don't want to force anything. God, God doesn't force anything on us, you know. But 
when we experience the love of God, when we know how loved we are, we want to respond back. I mean, we, we cannot contain it. It, it is just like uh, something that is inside of you that is this bubbling, you know, it's just like, I, I cannot contain it. I want to give it. I want to share it. I want to do something. So, how much um, is the, the love that God has um, for each one of us? Well, the same love that he has always had for each one of us. And I want to tell you, no matter your age, no matter your ministry, no matter your illnesses, no matter uh, whatever trials you are facing in life, God loves you the same way he has always loved you. will continue to love you the same way. Um, in Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis, in paragraph 10, uh, 92, he tells us, all of us as believers need to recognize that love takes first place. Love must never be put at risk. And the greatest danger lies in failing to love. The greatest danger that we may have is failing to love. So we, re we need to recognize that love takes first place in everything that we do. Um, in that love, then we are called to truly then do all this work and ministry in community, in ministry. We don't do it alone. We do it among others. We all of us are workers in God's vineyard. So it is so important that we are able to collaborate together and find ways to collaborate together. I know that you are so busy in your ministry, but sometimes you might have the opportunity or the way to help another person, you know, the other person is, 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 is in need, you might be able to do that. Don't say, well, that's not, not my ministry, you know, so I, I, I cannot help this person because it's not my ministry or, or, or it's not my talent or things like that. You know, I, it, it happens. It happened to me many times, you know, when um, there are sometimes, you know, apostolates who, yeah, they work very, very hard, you know, to bring these people, you know, they have a retreat, they, they train these per people and those kind of things. So I remember a, a, a one time, you know, I told this couple, can you please help me, you know, then give these talks, you know, to this group of, of uh, um, couples. You know, there are eight talks, you know, and I, 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 I know that you had a talent to, to do that. So they began, you know, then, yeah, to do that. But then two weeks later, they came and, and tell me, Father, you know, we are going to have to start doing it. Why? Well, it's because the coordinators of our movement, you know, told us that either we do this or we stay or we help the movement. And I tell you, like, what? I mean, what kind of apostolic movement is that? I mean, we are not here to be selfish. For, it's not for us. Again, it is for God. So um, continue, again, to find ways to be in unity. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your culture. It doesn't matter uh, um, uh, your language. Remember, all of us are children of God. And that's the first thing we never, uh, we never should forget. And all of us are loved the same way. God, said, God doesn't love this person more. God that, that loves you know, that person less. Or that per God loves all of us the same way. Even the greatest sinner. Because again, God's love is perfect. If I'm a, a, a great sinner, yeah, I'm not going to be able to experience God's love. But I cannot change the love that God has for me. I cannot even if I'm the greatest sinner. So everyone. Um, and, 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 and even, you know, I, I know in your community, you, you have uh, different cultures, different backgrounds, you know, and, and it's good, you know, and it really enriches uh, our lives and enriches in many ways our horizons. But work toward being always one parish. When I was ordained a priest, because I'm, my background is Latino, so... Many times, when I'll get to the parish, then some of the Hispanic people will tell us, it's so great that you are here, you know, because now you're going to be our priest. 
And always, I always say, no, I'm not here to be your priest. I'm here to be everyone's priest. So, because sometimes that could, that creates, you know, then, then like parallel, parallel churches, you know, in, in the same parish. And again, we need to find always different ways to work in union and community. We are here for everyone. Um, and, and, and thanks be to God, you know, uh, and, uh, for our background and, and for our limitations. I know one of my limitations continues to be, you know, being able to speak uh, uh, English fluently. You know, I, I learned English when I was uh, uh, 21. So, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit more difficult for me. But it's, it's even kind of, kind of funny, you know, it's funny. So one time, you know, uh, someone comes after mass, you know, asking for, for a, a pr asking for a prayer and said, you know, Father, can you please uh, um, pray for my hearing? So, oh, yeah, I'll be very happy to do that, you know. And then you place your hands, you know, on the person's ears and say, Lord, you know, be, bless your beloved son, be with him, you know, helping so that he will be able to hear well, you know, to be able to, to receive, you know, from, from you your healing power and, and be able to, okay, finish the prayer. Okay, so how are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh, Father, I'm doing fine, but my hearing is until Wednesday. So, you know, it's always nice, you know, when you have, a, a, when you're able to speak other language, you know, but sometimes you're not able to understand everything, right? So you're not, a, I mean, there are different kinds of hearing. Now I know that. There are different kinds of hearing. It's not the same for everyone. So, um, St. Paul, one of the things that St. Paul did was precisely to find ways to bring communities to union. And he used many, many times, especially in Romans and Corinthians, the image of one body. We are many parts, but we are one body. In Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, he says, Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important as yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also everyone for those of others. Not looking for his own interest, but also everyone for uh, those interests of others. But complete my joy by being of the same mind, the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Believe me, as a priest and as a pastor is one of the things that gives me so much joy. Every time I was able to see the parishioners together in different events, I mean, if it was a festival, if it was at a, a potluck dinner, if it was a, a concert, if it was one thing or another, it's just like, like that mother, you know, who is so happy when all the children, you know, are around, around the table. I mean, I, 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 I'm never going to be a mother, so I don't know the feeling. I don't know the feeling. But I always hear, you know, that they feel so happy. They are so joyful. It's, it's like, it, it, it's like they, they feel fulfilled, you know, when all the children are together. So I think, you know, that maybe that's a similar, you know, when I feel, you know, when the community is together and, 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 and working together and doing a lot of things together. I mean, there, there is this great joy that I feel in my heart. And I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing this. So, um, again, St. Paul uh, reminds us in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 25, 27, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may be the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honor, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. We belong to one another. When one suffers, everyone suffers. When one is happy, everyone is, is happy. And one of the important things that we need as we build relationships is this. If you notice that someone is missing, call that person. 
contact that person. I didn't see you today at church. Are you okay? I just want to make sure that you are okay. I mean, it, it, there are times, yeah, when people go out and things like that, but there are other things that happen in, in life, you know, that, that uh, um, maybe someone, again, is very depressed, sad, you know, I didn't see you today. And for us Catholics, it's so easy. It is so easy to do that. Why? Because most of us, when we go to church, we sit almost in the same place. Doesn't matter, you know, how many years. So it's, it's always, you know. So one time uh, as a pastor, I, 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 I did this exercise, you know, because every, every, every time, you know, before we began Mass, you know, the uh, uh, um, commentator asked everyone to greet one another. Please stand and greet one another. Welcome one another. And everyone will just turn around, you know, and then just kind of greet one another with, with, with the arm. And that's it. And I thought, you know, well, that's very, I mean, yeah, it's nice, but they're not really getting to know the other people. And, and, and one time I say, okay, I know that you greet one another, but today we're going to do it a little bit different. I want you to stand. I want you, yes, to say to the other person, my name is so and so, and I'm so happy that you are here. Welcome. And they look at me like, what? <laughs> you want us to do what? Like, yes, I want you to do this. You know, please do it. And I mean, some people did it, did it with reluctance, you know. Some people did it joyfully. But you know, I heard after that so many people saying, Father, you know what? I know that this family have always sat, you know, behind us. But I never knew their names. I never knew who they were. Thank you, because now at least I know, you know, or we know, you know, at least our names, you know, who they are. So I thought, hey, that, that's important. For me, and I think for everyone, again, we know how loved we are, but also we need to know that we are loved by the community, and that community is important to us. So if I'm not there, I hope someone will notice, and maybe will say, hey, are you okay? I didn't see you today. I just want you to know that I'm praying for you, or any, something like that. Um, So we build always then, then this, this culture of encounter among ourselves, and then we live our faith always in a deeper way as we know then how important it is what we do. And as a community, something that is so important for us, and especially as Catholics, is the celebration of the Eucharist. And right now we are during this National Eucharistic Revival. Take advantage of this. You know, in our parishes this, this uh, um, um, coming October, we are going to be having, you know, these conversation groups, you know, for uh, people to be able to get together in small groups and to talk about the Eucharist and their experience on the Eucharist and what we need to be enriched, what, what needs to, to happen so that we can truly experience the gift of the Eucharist in each one of us. Because believe me, there is nothing greater on earth than the Eucharist. There is nothing greater on earth than the Eucharist. There is no other place that we can be closer to God. There is no other place in this world that we can be closer to God than in the Eucharist. There is no other one. So these groups are going to be happening in all the parishes during the month of uh, um, October. And of course, you know, we need you, we need facilitators, and we need note takers, you know, so sister is gonna give us an announcement, you know, at the end, you know, but please listen, listen. I know that you are very busy with many other things in your ministry, but believe me, just uh, to facilitate or take notes is not gonna be that, diff that challenging, that difficult. It's very, very easy work to do. Uh, and, and, and I hope that it's going to enrich our lives. Um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that the most important grace or the greatest grace that we receive in the Eucharist is an intimate union with Christ, an intimate union with Christ so that we may know how loved we are. That's the greatest fruit and gift, grace of the Eucharist. I experienced it 
many years ago again as a, as a pastor. I'm sorry, you know, I, I, I keep telling stories, you know, for like, there is another story, you know, but God, God has taught me a lot of things, you know, in, in, my, in my life, you know, like, like and, and, and I'm thankful for that. So one time, you know, after the 8 o'clock mass, uh, English mass, you know, I, I'm, I'm outside greeting people, da, 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 and then someone comes and tells me, Father, please, I need you to come and see this lady. I say, oh, okay. You know, so there is this lady that is sitting at, 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 the, at the last pew, and immediately when I saw her, you know, I recognized who she is. It was a lady who was 92 years old, who always will sit on the third pew on, the left, on my left side. I always will see her there, 92 years old. She was bruised, and she was bleeding. And it's like with blood, you know, on her clothing. And I'm like, what happened to you? She said, Father, the thing is that yesterday, last evening, you know, I fell. And I was not able to get up. So I try and I try, you know, and until finally I was able to get up. And, and then, you know, I decided then to come here. And I came here. And I upset, you know, kind of, I decided to come here. I said, you should have called the ambulance. You should have called, you know, go to the hospital. I mean, why are you are here? And she said, Father, and then she began to cry. Father, I was so sad and afraid that I couldn't be, that I was not going to be able to be here today. I mean, for her, it was more important to be in church than to be in the hospital. I mean, when she told me that, I just kind of felt, you know, that slap, you know, that God gives you, like, okay, learn from it. And I said, my goodness. So then we began to talk, to speak a little bit more, and, and she began to tell me, Father, you know, every day, every Sunday, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because, again, 92 years old. Then I begin to get a dress, you know, I get a shower, dress, you know, all those kind of things. I, I do my coffee, my, my, my toast, everything. And, and, you know, so I, I, then I get on my car, you know, and, and then I drive here to church. And the driving was almost like half an hour from the place she lived, you know, to the church. And she drove, you know, very carefully, very slowly. But she did. But she was there in church. And I thought, my goodness, this lady does all this just to come to church. And I said, and you, Ramon, many times complain because we had, during weekdays, we had mass at 6 to 8 o'clock in the morning. And there were many days, you know, in the morning when I said, oh, my goodness, I had to get up. Who in the world, you know, invented to have, you know, 6 to 8 mass in the morning? You know, it's just like, ah. And I said, Wow. I never complain again, you know, about him to get up, you know, before 6.30, you know, for, for daily mass. But it was a great experience to know this lady wanted to be there with everyone. She was so, so afraid that she would not be able to share with us that morning the mass. For her, the Eucharist and her community was everything. And that's everything she had left, you know, in her life. So that community was so important for her. I learned that, yeah, we were in many different ways her family. And she saw us that way. Maybe we didn't see her that way, but she saw us that way as her family. So uh, in your packets, then, we're almost uh, ready for the next question. In your packet, you're going to find then um, A title that says, Being a Community of Believers. Being a Community of Believers. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want you to please read it. I think this passage of St. Paul to the Romans is so, help, so helpful for every group, for every ministry, for every parish, for every church, for every apostolate. I do truly believe that all these recommendations that St. Paul gives us are so important. So he begins, you know, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Again, do everything to please God. Offer yourself your spiritual worship. Then in um, 
uh, verse 4, you know, uh, he reminds us again that we are many parts, that we are together, um, but uh, that we are need to be united. But in, in verse 3, he says something that um, I think is so important. Um, no, let me see that. I need my glasses. Okay, yeah. Um, so in, in verse 3, by the grace given to me, I tell you, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than one ought to think. It means be always humble. Be always humble in your life. In uh, verse uh, 9, let love be sincere. I think that's so important. Let your love be as sincere sincere um, not just again to to make the other person you know feel good but really because you love the other person and you're happy that the other person is there I know that in every apostolate in every place you know there are troubles you know there are sometimes you know different uh, uh, characters there are different you know personalities that maybe don't don't uh, cling you know together and maybe there are those moments you know when it's difficult and maybe you get upset, you get angry, maybe you get into an argument. And that's okay. We don't have to agree in everything. But once the group and the community agrees on something, then be a good sport. And then just help um, do, do, of course, you know, everything that is good. <laughs> not, not, not to do something that is bad. Everything that is good. But... Um, and don't forget then to forgive. So important. Again, we, are, we, can, we may not agree on everything, but don't hold any grudge against anyone else in your group. Maybe because that person yelled at me or because that person, you know, uh, made faces at me or something. Never hold any grudge against anyone. You know, forgive. And forgive from the heart. Forgiving from the heart, it means this. Not necessarily because sometimes we, have, we need to keep healthy distance from other people. There are other people, again, whose personality maybe we're not going to get along. And that's the truth. And I accept it. You know, our personality are just going to always, you know, be, be shocking. So it's important then to keep sometimes even then a healthy distance, healthy distance. But um, how do I know that I have forgiven another person this way? When I hear the name of the person or when I see that person, I don't feel in my stomach those butterflies anymore. I just see the person and I kind of able to say, thank you, Lord, or bless my brother or bless my sister. But I don't feel, you know, all those butterflies, you know, something like, oh, I don't want to see him again. Like, what is he doing here? Right? Okay. And of course, you know, the last verse, verse 21, do not be conquered by evil but conquer evil with good. And that's what Jesus did all the time. He conquered evil by good. And that's why he was accused many, many times of eating with sinners. Uh, we just a few days ago, you know, we heard in, 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 in uh, at the Daily Mass, you know, that uh, um, Jesus saying, you know, the, uh, kind of complaining, saying, you know, well, you know, John the Baptist came, you know, and he didn't eat and drink, you know. Everyone, you know, said he was possessed by a demon. Now the son, son of man, you know, comes, you know, and he eats and drinks, and everyone, you know, he's a glutton, you know, and a drunkard. He's like, okay, well, it seems like we cannot please everyone, right? But, but G Jesus had a different way of doing ministry than the John the Baptist, and, and we can see all that in the gospel. And that's why Jesus was not afraid. To, to be able to eat with, with uh, others, you know, to eat uh, with sinners, to, to eat with uh, publicans, to eat or, or, or meet with a Samaritan or those kind of things. God, why? Because God always sees the heart. God doesn't see the appearance. God sees the heart. And something that I have learned too is every time Jesus enters into the homes of sinners, not everyone necessarily converted. I mean, we see many times then Jesus, you know, going to homes and having dinner, like, you know, uh, uh, yesterday, no, two days ago that we had the feast of St. Matthew. You know, yeah, 
he says, follow me. And of course, the next verse, you know, that we, that we see is then, then they're eating at Matthew's home. They're like, I thought Jesus said to Matthew, follow me, not, you know, take me for lunch to your home. But that's what happened, right? That's what happened. So he, they ended up having, you know, a dinner at Matthew's home. And, you know, then people complain, you know, well, you know, there were other tax collectors and other people, and, and Jesus was eating with them. And they complain, why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? And I asked ask myself, well, why Jesus would do that? I know that not everyone who was there believed in him. I know that not everyone who was there converted. I know that not everyone who was there followed him. Then why was he among sinners? Why was he among those people? And it teaches me we never should be afraid of that. We should never be afraid to be among other people that might be considered sinners. Never be afraid. The only work that we have is to plant the seed, and it's going to be the gospel today, to plant the seed and let God do the rest. We're just there to plant the seed and let God to do the rest. So whenever you get a chance, you know, read then um, this passage from uh, Romans 12. Again, I, I, I really love it. I think it's, it's wonderful. So we have a second question. But this question is for yourselves. I'm going to ask you to answer it and write down your answer. But with this time, we're not going to, we are not going to be sharing what are the virtues, qualities, gifts, or talents that you share with your community? Because remember, God has given all of us many virtues, talents, gifts to be able to build his body here on earth in this community. And you have many, many of them. The problem that some of us have is that we don't understand humility. And we think, no, I don't have any gift. No, I don't have any talent. No, I don't. That's wrong humility. Humility is to be able to acknowledge all the talents, all the gifts, everything that God has given me. And to be able to acknowledge it is a gift from God. And I need to use it. So that's going to be then your question. We're going to give you uh, 10 minutes. Um, because I know that it can be difficult. Um, my hope is that you will be able at least to find 20, 20 gifts, virtues, talents that you have. Believe me, you have more than that. I mean, if you begin to maybe on, on, on a whole day retreat or a whole week retreat, you know, you will be able to find more and more and more of those gifts. So think about those that you see I mean, there are some of those that, that you, you immediately will see, yeah, 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 this, this one, this one, and this one. And then you're going to start, what else? So you're going to have to burn your brain a little bit harder because they are there. You have more than 20. You have hundreds of gifts, virtues, talents, graces that God has bestowed upon you because God chose you, not us, God. God chose you. So... 10 minutes, 20 at least, minimum 20. Then after the 10 minutes, uh, sister is gonna come and talk to us about these, these uh, um, um, Eucharistic circles that we're gonna have during the month of uh, October.
We have three minutes, so I know that you are uh, still working with us, so thank you. Um, and just don't, don't think about, you know, any spiritual talent, you know, also any physical talents. I mean, if you are good with cooking, if you are a good mechanic, if you are good, you know, with, with uh, uh, cleaning, if you are good with uh, washing toilets, you know, I mean, if, if you are just, you know, you're good with, with uh, uh, greeting people, I mean, if you are good, you know, I mean, all those things are gifts, those, all those things are talents. You know, so, so don't, don't just think about the, the spiritual gifts or talents. All the other things that we do and we do them well are important. Just being there for people, visiting the sick, just, just uh, um, helping others to feel, you know, you are important to me or I value you. Those, all those are talents, you know, and being of service in many different ways. I'm 82. I'm 82. Uh -oh. huh? I'm 82. Huh? 82. 82 years old. 82. Oh you, you look so good <laughs> in all that. 82. Oh, that's, that's I forget yeah. everything. Forget my old name. <laughs> oh, I'm 44 and I forget everything. That's why I have to write everything. You know, because I forget. <laughs> you're humble. You're, you're, you're so eloquent. You're a great, you. great, great spirit. Good morning. Do you want me to be back there so that I can wait to people and okay. never rest? Okay. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> you know, I'm coming to beg you for another favor. We desperately, desperately need note takers and facilitators for our synod. The synod 
It's going to be on Friday, October the 6th from 6 to 9 p.m. and Saturday, October 7, from 9 to noon. Say that again, okay. Friday, October 6th, 6 to 9 p.m. Or you can come on Saturday, October 7, from 9 to noon. And we're going to have it out here in the sanctuary, okay? There will be a training for facilitators and note-takers on Thursday, September the 28th, Thursday night, from 6 to 9 p.m. in St. Clair Hall and Father Ullman Hall. Now, we have a lot of... Um, members from the Hispanic speaking community, they have already signed up and I have two or three pages of people from them. That's not enough. I need two or three pages of people from the English speaking community to help us out because we have 9,000 families here at St. Francis and we'd like to hear the voice of everyone. You know, it's not good enough to just the voice of just the leaders or less the people who are in ministry. We have 9,000 families and we'd like to hear from husband and we'd also like to hear from wife. Because I noticed that the last time when there was a survey, we did it in church. Do you remember that? And I noticed the wives said, oh, you do it. Or that, and I was sitting beside them and they said, oh, no, you do it. Husband to the wife or wife to the husband. So we want each individual to give their opinion. It's, and it's a listening session. It's not a judging session. We don't judge what somebody says. We just listen. Everybody answers the questions. The note taker takes the note. And when you're taking notes, you don't have to write the whole sentence. Just write down the, the, just the meat part of what they said. The real um, message of, of what the person shared. And we'll only have one or two minutes to share the answer to the question. So please help us out. We need you. Cleo is over there in the corner. You see her? She's waving at us. That's where the sign-up sheet is. So if you meet us over there during lunchtime, we'd appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you for your gift. Facilitators and note takers what I need. And when people come to the Senate, do you remember the last time we got names of people and we put them on the paper? This time we're going to just give the note taker and the facilitator the paper and group, that's the way it's going to happen. Either Friday night or Saturday night. You have a choice, Friday night or Saturday night. Yes. If you want to do in the group, okay? And also, we may have some on Sunday as well, but uh, we'll let you know about that later, okay? Any questions? Yes, John. Okay, we're looking for note takers and facilitators for small gatherings that the, for the Synod that's going to happen on the weekend of 6th and 7th of October. Or the, oh, the Synod is... Bishop, you want to explain this? Now? It's better coming from the head. No, no, you, I, I know you can explain it, you know. But, but, but a Synod is... is, is uh, um, it's more than a process. It's a way of being community, of being church, and, and, and begins with two things. Prayer, listening to the Holy Spirit, and listening to one another. That's where it begins. And the purpose of the synod is to be able then to grow in the faith and, and to be able to grow together and, uh, as a community. So, so from the very beginning, again, we see Paul, you know, in, in encouraging the communities to truly be united, you know, and that's why he wrote those letters, because he saw all the divisions that were in the, in the, in the communities, all the things that were not, so, so the, 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 the synod uh, is, is a way of being church 
it is a way of uh, building up ourselves into the body of Christ. And, and begin again with uh, listening to the Holy Spirit and listening with one another. And as we listen then to one another also, then, then we begin to, to be able to see what are the gifts that we have and what are the things that maybe we need to, to change or improve in our, in our community, in our lives, you know. At this time, as I mentioned to you, it's going to be on the Eucharist because of the Eucharistic revival. And, and the main goal is to be able to make sure that our parishes are really centered around Jesus in the Eucharist. And we want to, that's why we want to hear from everyone. And everyone to, to know that, yeah, the richest, uh, the, 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 the most uh, wonderful gift that we have is precisely that, the Eucharist, as I mentioned to you before. But you know, um, the bishops and the diocese is very proud of you. And this is not just to make you feel good, but we are very, very proud of you. Last time when, had these uh, small gatherings uh, in 2021, March, you know, 22, right? It was March of 2022. Um, San Francis of Assisi was the parish that has the most participation of the whole diocese. The most participation. You know, so they're like, wow, that's amazing. So I think Good Shepherd was the second place, you know, but you were first place. So. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Bishop. I told him I'm 82 and I forget my own name, so that's why I told him, help me out with the sentence. <laughs> so we do need you, def desperately need you. And just for your own information, there are three questions only, three questions, but no more than eight people per group. That includes the facilitator and the note taker. So no more than eight people per group, otherwise it'll take too long. And also, um, when the group is too big, you lose the message, or you, you, you don't get the benefit from the group, okay? So please, please, please sign up. Oh, Cleo's still over there. We'd love to have you. Um, and again, I really want to emphasize the fact it's a listening session, not a judging session. We don't make any comment on what anybody says. We just listen, go from one person to the next. We have a little symbol of a heart to be passed from one person to the next like we did the last time, okay? God bless you. Thank you. And thanks so much for the bishop for a wonderful retreat. God bless you, bishop. And we pray for you and you pray for us. Thank you. Uh, just want to not only talk about the, the synod being number one, but back in June, uh, this parish was the number one representation for the million meals uh, it, at first. And that, it, I'm very proud of that. You know, that uh, I was notified by Mike Daniels, Deacon Mike Daniels, that, that we had the number one sign-ups. So that meant a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lot. Thank, okay. thank you for remembering that. Yes. Yeah. receive this food. I pray that you bless the people who prepare it, that you bless